Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video where today we're going to be talking about simplifying radicals, but it's focusing on the quotient properties of radicals and what it means to rationalize the denominator. So if you previously watched my other video where we we're talking about the multiplication properties, then this would be the part two of that entire lesson. So the first thing we need to know is that when we have a square root, what I'm going to call a radical or square root, the words are interchangeable. If I take the square root of a fraction, like a over b, what that really means I can do is I can take the square root of my numerator and divide it by the square root of my denominator. So the square root of a fraction can really be the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the de denominator, or if I have it that way, I can actually put them together. So the square root of a numerator over the square root of the denominator can really just be grouped together as the square root of the numerator over denominator in that case. And you can interchange or work with them either way. It's completely fine. And a lot of the problems today, guys, there's so many different ways to do them. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to do every single method with you, but definitely I'm going to try to hit up as many different strategies as possible. And if you use a different strategy and you get the same answer that I do, then that's wonderful. Then you're on the right track. So first thing I want to show you is the square root of 9 over 16. And I really want to show you this break apart method. That would really mean I'm taking the square root of 9 and dividing it by the square root of 16. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, and that's my answer, 3 fourths. When you take the square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator. Now, I could have um, worked with this a little bit differently in some other methods, but this is probably the best strategy to do. So then if I went here, square root of x to the fourth over square root of 25. Square root of the x to the fourth, we learned, is x to the second. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 144 is 12. Square root of 100 is 10. Always check to see if you can simplify. 3 fourths is simplified. x squared over 5 is simplified. But 12 over 10, we can simplify to 6 fifths. Next one. Square root of 49x to the 8th would be 7x to the 4th. We take the square root of 49 and 7. Square root of x to the 8th would be x to the 4th. Remember, even exponents, you just cut right in half. Square root of 121x to the 4th would be 11x to the 2nd. Now, 7 over 11 is simplified, but x to the 4th over x to the 2nd, remember those exponent rules, you subtract your exponents when you're dividing them. So it's really 7x to the 2nd over 11. The next thing I need to explain to you is how to rationalize the denominator. It says a simplified expression has no radical in the denominator. In order to simplify, we must rationalize the denominator by multiplying it by the radical or the conjugate of the denominator. So this sounds kind of silly or crazy, like what do those words even mean? But here's the deal. 3 over radical 2 is technically not simplified, guys. We can't have a radical in our denominator. So what we do in order to get rid of the radical in the denominator is we multiply this fraction by a brand new fraction created of that denominator. So if radical 2 is in my denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by radical 2 over radical 2. Now we know that anytime you have a numerator and denominator of the same value, it's really 1. And multiplying anything times 1 is itself. So I'm really multiplying this to manipulate my numbers to get the radical out of the denominator, but I'm not changing the value of it at all. Because again, radical 2 over radical 2 is really just 1. But now look what happens. When I multiply, remember multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across. 3 times radical 2 is 3 radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 2, remember you multiply the 2's under the radical, is radical 4. But what the beauty of this is we know radical 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So this now becomes 3 radical 2 over 2. And that's my answer. This is now my final answer because there's no radical in my denominator. And that's what I need to have happen. So now we have our next problem of the square root of 4 fifths. So the square root of 4 is square root of 4, square root of 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is just square root of 5. But now we come into this problem again where the radical is in the denominator. And it's not technically simplified the whole way. So notice here when it was 3 over radical 2, we multiplied it by radical 2 over radical 2. So guess what? If it's 2 over radical 5, we're going to multiply it by radical 5 over radical 5. Whatever the radical is in the denominator is what we create a brand new fraction of where it's in the numerator and the denominator, and we multiply straight across. 2 times radical 5 is 2 radical 5. Radical 5 times radical 5, 5 times 5 is 25. 
and we know the square root of 25, it's simply just 5. So my answer becomes 2 radical 5 over 5, and that's completely simplified. So now that we have that, we can now move on to really learning how to simplify these expressions. And I'm going to show you this problem, and we're going to do it in three different ways. Radical 9 over radical 18. All of the answers that we're going to get are going to be identical, but the process is a little different. So let's go with the flow here. Ready? Radical 9 over radical 18. The square root of 9 is 3. Radical 18, well, 18 is not a perfect square. Think about it. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 18? 9. So this becomes radical 9, radical 2. So now this expression really becomes 3 over 3 radical 2 because the square root of 9 is 3. But we just learned we're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So whatever radical we have in our denominator, we create a brand new radical fraction of that radical 2. So we're going to multiply this by radical 2 over radical 2. We multiply fractions going straight across, guys. So 3 times radical 2 is 3 radical 2. 3 radical 2 times radical 2 would be 3 radical 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. Simplifying rules, right? Those 3 simplify out. And what's the square root of 4? It's 2. So my answer is just radical 2 over 2. Let's try it another way. Radical 9 over radical 18. So what if I took that rule where instead of having a fraction separated by radicals, I group them as one big fraction. The square root of 9 over the square root of 18 is really the square root of 9 over 18. And 9 over 18 simplifies to 1 half. So it's really me just finding the square root of 1 half. Well, square root of 1 half would be me taking the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 2 is square root of 2. Are we allowed to have a radical in the denominator? No. Let's multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. 1 times radical 2 is radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4. You see where this is going, just like up here. And that simply becomes radical 2 over 2. The last method I want to show you is a method where we break apart 18. And we notice that, hey, 9 and 18, they both have 9 in common. So what if I was to keep radical 9 and then break apart 18 into radical 9, radical 2, so that I could then simplify out my radical 9s? I would then be left with 1 over radical 2. And at this point, guys, I'm really just picking up from this step here. If I do that, I then multiply by radical 2 over radical 2, multiply straight across, and I get my exact same result. So different ideas to get the exact same answer, and any of these strategies are completely fine. So technically, I could use any of those strategies to do these problems. Um, if you wanted to pause the screen right now, try these problems out, see if we get the same final answer. It doesn't matter what strategy you use, but we should hopefully get the exact same answer. So when I look at this, I might say to myself, hey, well, 8 goes into 24 three times. So what if I broke apart 24 into radical 8, radical 3? Now, I know that kind of goes against the other methods. They're not perfect squares. That's not how I've taught you to break things apart, but we actually can do that. And if I do that and I break apart 24 into radical 8, radical 3, I'm now left with 1 over radical 3. We know the deal. We can't have a radical in the denominator. Multiply it by radical 3 over radical 3, which becomes radical 3 over radical 9, which is radical 3 over... 3. This next one. Let's say I started simplifying what I could, right? So 8 over 2 becomes 4. So I've got 4 radical 2, and then radical 8 I could break apart into radical 4, radical 2. So I simplified 8 over 2 to get this 4. The radical 2 stays up top, but now I broke apart radical 8. What I also notice here is that then my radical 2s I can simplify out. So I'm left with 4 over square root of 4 is 2, and 4 over 2 is just 2. If you're multiplying fractions together, you're really multiplying the radical of the numerator over the radical of the denominator. So this really becomes radical 5 over radical 7 times radical 2 over radical 5. And remember what you've learned about multiplying fractions. You can cross-simplify. So look at that. I can cross out my radical 5s. I'm left with radical 2 over radical 7. We've learned we are not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. 
So we need to multiply it by radical 7 over radical 7. Radical 2 times radical 7 becomes radical 14. Radical 7 times radical 7 is radical 49, which just becomes 7 in my denominator. All right, guys. So here's what it means to multiply by the conjugate. When you have a denominator, that's not just radical 2. This one is 5 plus radical 2. You have to multiply it by the conjugate. The conjugate's actually really easy to come up with. If you see it says 5 plus radical 2, the conjugate is 5 minus radical 2. So the conjugate here is 5 minus radical 2 over 5 minus radical 2. Now it looks kind of funky the first time you see it, but trust me as we go along with this. So here's what's going to happen. We've got the distributive property going on. I've got to do 3 times 5, which is 15. And then I've got 3 times a negative radical 2, which is negative 3 radical 2. But now I have this denominator. And I've got really binomials here. Remember multiplying binomials? So 5 times 5 and then 5 times negative radical 2. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times negative radical 2 is 5, negative 5 radical 2. Then I need to go ahead and distribute radical 2. So radical 2 times 5 is 5 radical 2. And then radical 2 times negative radical 2 would be negative radical 4. Well, what special situation is going to happen here is that these two middle terms, guys, they're always going to be opposites, and they're actually going to simplify each other out. So really, all I needed to do here in this case was I needed to multiply 5 times 5 to get 25, and then radical 2 times negative radical 2 to get negative radical 4. So this now becomes 15 minus 3 radical 2, that's my numerator, and then it's 25 minus square root of 4 is 2. My final answer would be 15 minus 3 radical 2 over 23. Now you can't do 15 minus, minus 3, you can't call that 12 because they don't have like radicals. Okay, If that said 15 radical 2, then you would be able to do the subtraction. Now there's a lot going on here, but what I want to show you is that we create the conjugate by looking at this denominator. We change the sign of the middle term, in the middle here rather. We then use our distributive property. But instead of having to do all of this work, what we're going to do is we're going to simply multiply the first two terms and the last two terms to kind of avoid this middle step, which I promise you is going to happen every single time. And I can prove it to you just to show how we could have done, do it faster. So 4 over 3 minus radical 5. Conjugate here would be 3 plus radical 5. So ready? 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative, I'm sorry, 4 times radical 5 is 4 radical 5. So, so far what I did is 4 times 3 and then 4 times radical 5. Now my denominator. And you know what? I'll show you the work just to show you that it's going to happen again. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times radical 5 is 3 radical 5. Now I go ahead and I distribute my negative radical 5. So negative radical 5 times 3 and a negative radical 5 times positive radical 5. So negative radical 5 times 3 is negative 3 radical 5. Negative radical 5 times positive radical 5 is negative radical 25. And lo and behold, these two middle terms, they're opposites. And guess what? We just didn't even need to do them to begin with. So now this becomes 12 plus 4 radical 5 over 9 minus square root of 25 is 5. So now it's 12 plus 4 radical 5 over 4. And hey, guess what? We actually can simplify this. Look at your, your constants, your numbers that are out there, and your coefficients. 12, 4, and 4. What are those all divisible by? 4. And also, remember, when you were simplifying fractions, if you can do 12 divided by 4, and also 4 radical 5 divided by 4, then you can simplify it. 12 divided by 4 is 3. These four simplify out, and you're just left with plus radical 5. Okay, for our next one, 5 over 1 plus radical 3. So our conjugate would be 1 minus radical 3 over 1 minus radical 3. We would go ahead and distribute. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times negative radical 3 would be negative 5 radical 3. Then let's go ahead and skip those steps. So the denominator, we just really need to do 1 times 1 is 1. And then we need to do radical 3 times negative radical 3. Guys, if we do this step, we're saving ourselves so much more distributing. That's really all you would have to do. So now this becomes 5 minus 5 radical 3 over 1 minus 3. 
which is now 5 minus 5 radical 3 over negative 2. And that's our answer. Last one. Our conjugate here would be 2 plus radical 6. Let's go ahead and distribute. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times radical 6 is 4 radical 6. Then we are simply multiplying the first two terms together. 2 times 2 is 4. And then negative radical 6 times positive radical 6 would be negative radical 36. So now this becomes 4 plus 8 plus 4 radical 6 over 4 minus 6, which becomes negative 2 in the denominator, but then remember, if you can simplify it, we need to. So 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4, and then 4 radical 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 2 radical 6. A lot's going on in this video for sure. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.